Family Feud by Scott Mason. Trouble is brewing over at the Campaign for Liberty, the political action committee founded by Ron Paul to continue advancing the principles he so eloquently advocated for during his 2008 run for president. Apparently, $350,000 was spent to tout the fiscal credentials of Colorado Senate candidate Ken Buck. Problem is, well, Buck is pretty much the absolute antithesis of libertarian ideals and foreign policy. Essentially, he favored the invasions in both Iraq and Afghanistan and believes we should stay the course in both countries. For their part, the Campaign for Liberty is claiming that this was done as part of some sort of survey program and that there was a misunderstanding of sorts regarding Buck's foreign policy views. They say they realize they made a mistake, they'll learn from it in the future, and they'll make sure nothing like it happens again. While it's refreshing to see them take responsibility for their mistakes, many prominent supporters of the organization are understandably very upset. Says Ron Paul writer Michael Moresco, quote, this organization was sold to the the people who donated as a bottom-up organization. It has been the exact opposite. The lack of transparency and accountability is astounding. This must change. End quote. Oklahoma congressional candidate R.J. Harris is likewise outraged. Quote, Campaign for Liberty gives a neocon $350,000 in campaign assistance, while real liberty candidates like Jake Town, Adam Kokesh, Deborah Medina, and myself get nothing when that much money could win several of these seats for Ron Paul Republicans? Why is this? Because Deborah is not connected with the right people. Jake's running independent because of corruption in the Pennsylvania GOP. Adam is militantly anti-war, and I have the audacity to challenge an incumbent Republican, end quote. Harris has a point, and I understand his anger, but later on, he said something that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Quote, stop supporting men because of their last name or their fame, and instead support candidates because of the consistency and purity of their message and the worthiness of their cause. Freedom, end quote. Harris is clearly taking a shot at Ron Paul's son Rand, a candidate for Senate in Kentucky, and Connecticut Senate candidate Peter Schiff, who frequently appears on cable news networks for his financial expertise. I like Harris a lot, but I wish he hadn't said that. For starters, it makes him look petty and jealous of the money and attention Schiff and Paul have received. It also underlies a problem I found within the liberty movement, a refusal to support anyone or anything that isn't 100% in line with them. Now, I understand this when it comes to Ken Buck, as his views on foreign policy policy are completely against the non-interventionist views of the liberty movement. But I don't understand it with Rand Paul and Peter Schiff. In the case of Paul, he's come out against civilian trials for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his comrades and believes they should be tried at military tribunals. For the record, I disagree with him and I think his position is disappointing, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. Why? Because it's not an absolute portrayal of core principles. Look, if Rand had come out in favor of waterboarding, foreign unprovoked invasions, bank bailouts, or major increases in taxes and spending, that would be a different story. But he didn't. Even funnier is the flack that Rand is now getting for receiving an endorsement from Sarah Palin. If Rand had gone hat in hand seeking Palin's endorsement, that would be one thing. But just because he doesn't call Palin up and curse her out doesn't mean that her endorsement means that he's adopting her positions. After all, Ron Paul received endorsements from conspiracy theorist Alex Jones and Don Black, who operates the website Stormfront, one of the world's best known white supremacists websites. Ron Paul never denounced them, nor should he have had to, but that doesn't mean that he was in line with everything they said either. As for Schiff, while it's true that he said he, quote, might consider some form of military action if he knew for a fact Iran or Iraq had weapons and they wouldn't let inspectors in, he also made it quite clear that he was against the Iraq war, believes we should be pulling troops back, not escalating them, thinks spending endlessly on wars is the road to economic ruin, and thinks no war should ever be fought with without a declaration from Congress. That doesn't make him Cindy Sheehan, but it sure as hell doesn't make him a neocon either. The point is, Rand Paul and Peter Schiff are still worth supporting, even if we don't agree with them on every single issue. Because at their core, they're both believers in limited government who we are likely to agree with nine times out of ten. Let's face it, unless you're a robot, you're never going to agree with anybody on the planet on everything. Hell, I love Ron Paul, but I think his fence on the border idea is pretty much insane. But that doesn't stop me from wishing every day that 
he were the one occupying the White House right now. R.J. Harris is right when he says we need to support him, Deborah Medina, Jake Town, and Adam Kokesh. But we should support Rand Paul and Peter Schiff too. People are extremely fed up with the government right now, and they're looking for alternatives. With our strong belief in freedom across the board, we in the Liberty Movement have a golden opportunity to capitalize on the dissatisfaction and turn ourselves from a minority into a real lasting majority. To do that, however, we have to avoid letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. The sooner we realize that, the sooner we can go from being a thorn in Washington's side to putting somebody like Ron Paul behind that big oak desk in the Oval Office where he belongs.